Hi everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I have about a half a bottle of some One Step Purple Tie-Dye, Tulip Tie-Dye, left over from some dyeing I was doing today. So I thought it would be fun to dye a semi-solid sock yarn in the kettle using this purple. I just added six cups of water to my dye pot and then I immediately submerged and I'm heating it up now. Um, I just added 100 grams of some 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon yarn. This is the Stroll sock yarn from Netpix and is one of my favorite ones to use. Now, I recently found that if I add heat with these tulip tie-dyes in the yarns, then I don't have to wait 24 hours for the colors to bind. They can bind a lot faster, which means that I'm now playing around with using the dyes for some low immersion techniques. But actually, I'd say I have more than half of this bottle left. But once this heats up a little bit, and I saw a bubble, so we're probably going to get close pretty fast, we will add all the dye to it and see, you know, how solid versus semi-solid we end up with for our yarn. Can you hear the little bit of bubbles? I'm going to reduce the heat to low, and now we are going to add all of this tie-dye. Start off with a fun spiral, <laughs> just because I can. Now, I know that this will spread out a lot. I'm adding a lot of it to the outside and then a little more to the center. There we go. The dye is tapped. Uh, I think the colors on my hand are from earlier in the day. <laughs> but I'm now going to put the lid on our pot and sort of just let this sit. And I'll come back in 10 minutes and we'll see where we are. And it has been 10 minutes. And I would say that this is bluer in person. It's looking a lot more of a magenta on camera. But I'm going to reduce the heat even more. I do see some sections that, you know, maybe, I, I mean, it does look redder than when I first added it. I'm curious about how semi-solid versus solid-solid this is going to be. I do see some potential lighter and darker patches, but I am intrigued. I mean, certainly there's one light patch back there, and there's like another one right there. That's not just the light hitting it. But I think I'm going to go ahead and leave the heat on for 10 more minutes and see what else we can pick up. All right, the 10 minutes has passed and it looks pretty much like it did before. But I'm now going to turn off the heat and let this cool completely in the pot. Well, instead of just letting this yarn cool in the pot, I left it overnight. Whoops! <laughs> Sometimes, you know, it's kind of like, well, what was the point of heating it if I was still going to leave it in overnight? Well, we'll see how solid versus semi-solid this looks in the end. Um, but now we need to wash it. So there's, you know, we certainly did not exhaust the color, but you, know, you can see I put my hands in it and my hands aren't picking up any excess color. This is a beautiful, beautiful purple. You know, this is actually kind of reminiscent from, from the color that I did with a purple many, many years ago. But I always like to try to find the sides of my hank so that way I can hold on to it without getting it tangled as I'm rinsing it off. And I just realized I was slightly out of camera and sorry about that. So this yarn had, what, over half of a bottle of the tie-dye put on it. And we had it cook for for a while and then it sat overnight. And after just a couple of rinses, look at how clear that water is. I mean, there's obviously still pink in there, but it is significantly clearer from what we might see if we hadn't heated it. And so at this stage, I'm gonna start adding 
um, dish soap to help rinse out all of this excess dye. And since I wanted to wash the pot to do some more dyeing today, I figured we had a two birds, one stone. The pot's cool, the yarn is cool, so we may as well rinse them together. But anyway, I am gonna keep rinsing until the water runs clear. Um, depending on how fast it's taking, I might do soap a second time. But I'm gonna hang this up to dry and then show you guys the finished dry yarn. Here is our finished semi-solid yarn. It is really hard, I think, on camera for you to see the subtle differences in the color and tone of this yarn. But we do have this nice medium sort of pink purple and there are some really, really subtle variations of the tone throughout, which would give some really nice dimension to a knit project, but also is a yarn that you could use for something that has a complicated stitch pattern because the subtle color changes won't take away from lace or cables or anything like that. When I set out to dye this yarn, I was hoping for some kind of semi-solid. I certainly was not going for an even color, and the result is actually, all things considered, pretty even. There are definitely some tonal variations, but given the way that we applied the dye and didn't stir things up, it could have ended up with a lot more contrast between the color sections. If we had done this with an acid dye or with, uh, with food coloring, we would have seen the colors strike to the yarn really quickly and had some dark patches and then some paler patches. Whereas overall, we have a fairly consistent, even color. When the yarn is twisted up, you can start to get a little better sense of some of the variation of the tones in this yarn. But when you're looking at the skein like this, it's a little hard to tell what is sort of light hitting the yarn versus the differences in shades. And this is because the semi-solid nature gives the yarn a lot of depth and dimension. I think that if I were to reskein this yarn, you might be able to get a little better sense of the tonal variation, but in general, I prefer to leave yarns as they were dyed. And you can see a little hint of some of the paler sections up there. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release at least two new videos every week, and you don't want to miss a thing. If you would like to support Chemnitz on a more personal level, Check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can get early access to new dyeing videos, vote in polls to shape the new content for my dyeing projects, and more. You can find a link in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.